from Washington State, Ms. Del Bene, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you, Director Comey, for being with us and for all of your time. Um, I've worked my career in technology on email and mobile communications and constantly heard from, from um, customers, both consumers and businesses and even the government to make sure that information was protected um, and that devices were secure. And in your testimony, you state that you're simply asking to ensure that you can continue to obtain electronic information and evidence. And you seem to be asking technology companies to, to freeze in place or revert back to systems that might have been easier to access. But don't you think in general that that's much an oversimplification of this issue? Um, because we all know that bad actors want to exploit vul vulnerabilities um, to break into any number of things from a phone, a personal device, to our power grid. These things aren't static, they're changing constantly and they're getting smarter every day. Um, the bad actors are getting smarter every day and we need to be smarter every day in terms of protecting information. So in that type of environment, how would you expect a technology company not to continue to evolve their security measures to keep up with new threats that we see? First of all, I, I would expect security companies and, and technology companies to continue to try and improve their security. That's why it's important that all of us talk about this because it's not the company's job to worry about public safety. Right? It's the FBI's job, Congress's job, and a lot of other folks in the government. So I, I don't put that on the companies. But the other thing that can, concerns me a little bit is this sense that if we have a world where people comply with government warrants, it must be insecure. And I don't buy that because there are lots of providers today of email service, of tech service, who have highly secure systems who, because of their business models, visualize the, the information in plain text on their servers so they comply with court orders. I have not heard people say their systems are insecure. They simply have chosen a different business model. So I actually don't think it's, again, a lot of people may disagree with me. I actually don't think in the main it's a technological problem. It's a business model problem. That doesn't solve it, but that gets us away from this it's impossible nonsense. But we know more and more. In fact, we're seeing, we're talking about phones today, but we're talking about the growth in the Internet of Things of more and more personal devices where security will be even more critical. And so it's hard to say you're talking about a world where it's confined to the way the world works today. I think that absolutely is not the situation that we're facing. We're seeing evolution every day, and these are devices that are connected to networks and information is flowing. And that information might be someone's financial information or personal information that, if it is exploited, would create a security issue itself. I agree. So don't you believe that encryption has an important role to play in protecting security? Vital. So now when we've talked about um, what role Congress plays versus what role the courts would play. And you've kind of talked about both in different scenarios. You talk about privacy versus security and that Congress should play a role there, but the courts should decide whether or not there's a security breach if there's a piece of technology that breaks into in, um, a device and whether or not there's a concern that that will um, be widely available. Yet. Um, the tension isn't really between just privacy and security, it's between security and security and protecting people's information. And, um, and so how do you, where do you think Congress plays a role versus the courts when you've talked about both of them in your testimony today? I think the courts have a job to, in particular cases, interpret the laws that Congress has passed throughout the history of this country to try and decide the government is seeking this relief, does that fit within the statute? That's, that's the court's job and they're very, very good at it. The larger societal problem we have is this collision that I think you've, you've said well between privacy and security, very difficult to solve it case by case by case. We have to ask ourselves, how do we want to govern ourselves? Right? If you are a manufacturer of devices in the United States or you provide communication services in the United States, what are our, as a country, what are our expectations of you and demands of you? It's hard for me to see that being worked out on a common law basis, honestly. So uh, but it's going to be because the, the issue is joined every single day in our law enforcement work. If nobody else gets involved, the courts will have to figure it out. This, this, uh, this isn't just an issue of U.S. companies alone because clearly there's access to technology that could be developed in other countries that we will not have access to and that's widely available today um, for, and people can use. But also, 
then it is important. We have laws that are centuries and decades old um, that have not kept up with the way the world works today. And so it is very important that Congress plays a role because if courts are going to be interpreting those laws and those laws were written with no awareness of what's happening today, then Congress needs to play a role of making sure we have laws that are up to date and um, setting that standards that courts can then follow. Thank you. I yield back, Mr. Chair. Chair, thanks. The gentleman recognizes the uh, gentleman from New York, Mr. Jones.